Yesterday, SpaceX fans and T-Mobile customers alike, and by the way, I happen to be both of these things, were waiting with bated breath as Elon Musk and his partners at T-Mobile prepared to make a stunning announcement. Everybody expected big things from this partnership, but nobody really had a clear idea as to what they were going to say. Was this going to be some sort of collaborative bundled service deal, where if you were a T-Mobile customer, you might get your Starlink access for free, not have to pay for the equipment up front, for example, which has been one of the biggest problems with trying to get new customers for Starlink, or might it be something else? Well, what it turned out to be from the moment that T-Mobile took the stage was a colossal technological breakthrough that may change the nature of cell service forever. However, what it also was when Elon Musk took the stage and started fielding questions was a little peek inside the whole situation with Starship, Starlink, and how things are starting to develop with these projects. And in the end, I was left with the impression that this may be the biggest gamble that SpaceX has ever taken. They may realize enormous profits out of this and surpass everybody, not only in terms of spaceflight, but also in terms of cell service and broadband access. But if they fail, it will be a damaging development for both companies. Hello, YouTube. I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... So I think all of us or most of us have been in this kind of situation. You're driving through a rural area following your GPS, which in its amazing artificial intelligence wisdom has decided to send you through the middle of nowhere in order to save time. You're going through this region well aware of the fact that you have absolutely no cell service. All you have is your GPS map and you know that if you bring break down someplace in this area, you are going to be completely out of luck. And the situation gets even worse for people in more remote areas, national parks, or indeed fishermen out at sea who happen to experience problems and don't have a satellite phone. All of these things have been a huge problem for cell phone users ever since the advent of the technology. And now T-Mobile and SpaceX are going to bring this to a stop forever by utilizing Starlink and version 2 of the Starlink satellite on top of a special customized antenna designed to be used in conjunction with existing T-Mobile equipment to provide cell access everywhere, including the middle of the ocean. Now, they're going to start out in the United States, but the objective is to set up a reciprocal roaming network with other carriers around the world until everybody has this capability. Now, what this means for T-Mobile is absolutely astonishing. It means that they are going to have a network that absolutely nobody can match. No cell phone carrier anywhere in the world is going to have this comprehensive of a level of coverage. Nobody is going to have access to a comprehensive satellite network with antennas like Starlink has provided in order to be able to provide this kind of coverage, which means T-Mobile will be set up to utterly dominate the entire cell phone market. And at first I was thinking, okay, this is why SpaceX is gonna start using Falcon 9 to deploy their version two satellites because they need to demonstrate to T-Mobile that they're gonna start getting these version two satellites into orbit as rapidly as possible as the Starship program develops. However, Elon Musk immediately poured ice cold water over this idea. He was queried as to how many of these version two satellites with these new antennas could possibly be fit inside the fairing of a Falcon 9, and the answer from Elon was a little shocking. To put it simply, Elon doubled down on his earlier statement saying that the version 2 Starlink satellite simply cannot fit inside Falcon 9's fairing. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, 
Steelers, it cannot be done. Rather, the earlier announcement that was made that Falcon 9 was going to start deploying the version 2 satellite was a smaller, scaled down version of the satellite that would be capable of completing the Starlink network, sort of a stopgap measure, until Starship became operational. He said, in case there's a delay with the Starship program. Now, I'm here to tell you, there is no way in hell that SpaceX is going to be developing an entirely new scaled-down version of their version 2 Starlink satellite for Falcon 9 unless they absolutely have to. So here's the current situation. T-Mobile is depending on a completely untried rocket system to take their new network into orbit. Their claims of providing worldwide coverage to every square meter of the planet is entirely dependent on Starship and its level of success. The fact that this ship is going to become a practical vessel and something that will be able to deploy all the satellites they need to complete this network. That, in my opinion, is a colossal gamble. Because although people like you and me may understand that space is hard and sometimes launch systems succeed and sometimes they fail and by the way I have every confidence that Starship is going to be successful in the long run but your average cell phone customer they don't understand this at all and if T-Mobile starts announcing that they're going to be providing coverage to every inch of the planet or at least every inch of the United States by the end of next year which is practically what they said they were going to be doing during the rollout yesterday. Well, T-Mobile customers may tolerate a delay of a few months or something like that, but if Starship is delayed for years for some reason, that's something that's going to lose T-Mobile a lot of customers because their customer base is going to regard this as a failed promise and perhaps even a lie, and that's something you really have a hard time coming back from as a service provider and I know this because I was in the telecommunications industry for a very very long time you announce that your network is going to be capable of certain things and a couple of years later it's still not capable of it that's something your customers generally don't forgive you for and by the way if you think that SpaceX is developing these downgraded version 2 satellites to be launched on Falcon 9 simply because they want to get the network operational while they upgrade the real version 2 satellites and that's the only reason that they're developing these things well then why not launch them on Starship why even bother to announce that you're going to be launching them on Falcon 9 no actually SpaceX is developing these satellites because they really have no choice and because Starship is taking longer than expected but again as I've said many times times before. I'm not surprised about this. Not even remotely. This is a very, very ambitious project. The most powerful rocket in human history. What I am surprised about is the company like T-Mobile is gambling the future of their company on a rocket that has yet to go to orbit. But here's the good news. I do not believe that T-Mobile is a company that's run by idiots who are willing to take reckless chances with the future of their company and their network. I believe that whoever made these decisions over at T-Mobile had an opportunity to examine the future of Starship, all the technical specifications, and the viability of this spacecraft, and determine whether or not they should really take this kind of risk. And they made the decision to go forward with the partnership and if they made that decision I think that that is a strong indication that Starship even though it may take longer to get to orbit than we're thinking is going to be a very solid platform that is going to transform the future of human spaceflight and isn't that something that we all want by the way don't forget the 100k challenge if I get a hundred thousand subscribers and Starship Starship performs a successful orbital test before Vulcan Centaur can deploy the astrobotic peregrine lander on the moon. I will tattoo SpaceX fanboy on my butt. 
Don't forget that. It's a race that I have a lot of personal stake in, to say the least. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, hit that notification button. It's so important to my channel. And please check the description for ways to support my content because it's very important right now, given that I'm about to embark on a six-week journey to bring you the best space flight content you've ever seen. And as always, stay angry about space!